A couple of weeks ago, I was tipped off with an interesting set of information that showed Intel was actually trying to get on 7 nanometer EUV as soon as possible when they realized 10 nanometer would be problematic. And of course, we know it was problematic all the way back in 2015. So in 2016, Intel set out to buy the majority of ASML first generation EUV steppers to get a leg up on the competition in case 10 nanometer could never really be used. And if we go to ASML's website, we can see, yeah, that's when they started shipping them. And so here's the thing. Intel wasn't screwing around for a few years, even though they were kind of lying about 10 nanometers readiness all the way back in 2016. It seems like they did realize that 10 nanometer may never be as good as, well, what 14 and 22 and 32 nanometer were. And so they better start working on some R&D early and this doesn't actually come from a source within intel no this comes from just a public analyst who found this information from what's readily available on the internet these are asml purchases you guys can look it up if you don't believe me intel has been working on seven nanometer euv since probably late 2016 and so, while I was excited to break the news on Golden Cove last October, I have remained skeptical about this monstrous amount of information that Intel really would be able to execute on 7 nanometer EUV by 2022. And that's because how can you trust someone who lied to everyone over and over on 10 nanometer? I'm, frankly, I was like, you know what? I'll believe 7 nanometer is coming when you get a real working 10 nanometer product out. But I have to admit, I've had time to think about this public hint I've been given, and yeah, they say it usually takes about five years to get something like this up and running, and five years before 2022 is, well, it's 2017. So I'm starting to think it could be plausible they could get to 7 nanometer EUV by the end of 2022, actually. And in fact, recently I was sent more information from another source who is anonymous. And it was all bombshells backing up previous information I reported first that Intel is planning to use 10 nanometer for their GPUs for DG2 and DG3, and that 7 nanometer will be reserved for Jupiter Sound and Ponte Vecchio. 7 nanometer EUV is progressing, and we should have it by 2022 as a real node. Real node meaning taking over for most of 14 nanometer, meaning there could be some select 7 nanometer products at the end of 2021, and he suggested all Lake directly. The de tile design, however, is nowhere near consumer ready, so they're still focusing on low power, at least with DG2. And even if 10 nanometer isn't profitable, Intel sees it as a sunk cost, they will use it as much as they can because it is by now getting better than their 14 nanometer for at least low power and mobile devices. He's fairly confident they will for sure use 10 nanometer in select Halo products. And yes, Intel is talking to TSMC about using their EUV nodes N7 Plus and N6. And that's because Intel is acutely aware that their node disadvantage to AMD cannot fall any more behind. If 7 nanometer EUV from within Intel is delayed to, let's say, 2023, they know they've got to at least get a decent set of Halo products in every category out on TSMC because they cannot fall behind any further. So the six nanometer DG2 and the 10 nanometer DG2 rumors really don't conflict with each other. Intel's considering both options, although this information is apparently fairly new. It's not from last week, but it is from within a month ago. So I think this is more current than the six nanometer DG2 rumors. And this actually comes from one of my most reliable sources. This isn't the initial whispers of Golden Cove guy. This is actually someone who's usually pretty critical of Intel. And I push back saying, I don't know, this seems a little too optimistic. And all he had to say is, it is what it is. This is on an official internal roadmap. But speaking of that source I got that was a major part of my Whispers of Golden Co. video, what does he think? He's usually an Intel optimist. Well, actually, his opinion was more negative than this other source. Last he heard, DG2 and DG3 are actually being planned for TSMC, despite Intel legitimately still planning to use their own 10 nanometer as late as last 
year. So he's saying he tentatively expects seven nanometer TSMC graphics cards mid next year and seven nanometer CPUs mid to late 2022, which is farther out than the other source. And he is pretty damn sure Alder Lake is on 10 nanometer, Intel's own 10 nanometer, not 7 nanometer and he wants to remind everyone that the reason alder lake would be on their own 10 nanometer is because it really really does work right now tiger lake will be clocked at least 400 megahertz faster than ice lake which i can also verify based on public leaks that are out there although he did want to emphasize that it's clear intel is considering multiple options right now and that he wouldn't bet a single dollar on which node they're going to end up using and here's the thing, I trust both of these sources, they've been right multiple times in the past. So my overall conclusion after talking to all three of these sources is that Intel is really working on seven nanometer, whether it's out early 2022 or late 2022, it should be roughly on track with what they're saying and everything up from now until then can be on a whole hodgepodge of nodes. Although it really is worth emphasizing that until Intel can afford to have all of their products not a node behind and manufactured on their own nodes, they're in a lot of trouble because the way Intel works is their fabs need to be running 24 seven or they are losing money. So yes, it's nice that they can go to TSMC for seven nanometer or six nanometer or three nanometer, but until they can get all of their products on their own node, it's not gonna be good enough for anything but enthusiast benchmarks. Although this last source was quick to point out something that is honestly pretty important, and that's that the existing 14 nanometer nodes are not EUV, just like the 10 nanometer node is not EUV. They can upgrade the 14 nanometer nodes to 10 nanometer. So this should allow for some graceful transitions between select 14 nanometer fabs to 10 nanometer fabs as they decide their 10 nanometer node is yielding good enough to keep up with that and with the things they're doing in Costa Rica to increase 14 nanometer capacity, I think this will buy them some time before they really need to completely redo some facilities for seven nanometer. And again, that really is incredibly important that a large portion of their manufactured chips, the small laptop chips, can be made on 10 nanometer. And so, yeah, their big server chips, I think they will make some 38 core Ice Lake server chips for select customers, but the bulk of that's still going to have to be 14 nanometer, and they're at a big disadvantage. But again, transitioning to 10 nanometer for more of their fabs should allow them to not be as much as two nodes behind, maybe just one node behind AMD at least for the next 12 months but there's no way around it it's going to be a rough 18 months for Intel either way even if they can get to a point where 10 nanometers yielding better than Broadwell and like a 70% 14 nanometer 30% 10 nanometer and then select 7 nanometer TSMC Halo product split if that makes sense and again those mobile chips will be able to go up to eight cores intel's working on eight core tiger lake as i've discussed and the 10 nanometer yields are getting better and you can see this if you just look at litany of ice lake products coming out now if i scroll around amazon there are tons of the better Ice Lake i7s in stock, and more announcements are coming out about Ice Lake products. In fact, I checked my Best Buy. I can go there and get that laptop in under an hour. So if 10 nanometer wasn't becoming more of a real node, I would expect it to be like when Ice Lake first came out. Select Halo products that you only really see at, I don't know, Razer or maybe a couple of Envy HP designs. But no, it seems like more and more laptops even some of the cheaper ones are starting to get ice lake and that does tell me that obviously their 10 nanometers getting better as they ramp towards tiger lake and for more in-depth analysis of all of these things intel's working on for 10 and 7 nanometer just go watch those old videos i've already done that detail these products and so yeah, that's my latest blowout on what's going on with Intel on 10 and 7 nanometer. I thought it would be good to get this out there exclusively, whatever that means, so that you guys know what's going on behind the scenes. I stand by Intel is going to have better and better products. Well, after Comet Lake, I think Comet Lake's going to be an unmitigated disaster. But they'll have some cool stuff next year. And again, the question is not, is Intel working on cool things? It's not, 
Are they going to make 10 nanometer real? Are they going to get to 7 nanometer EUV? They are. The question is, is any of this going to matter when AMD is on 7 nanometer EUV for select products and Zen 3 is out? Because I just don't know if it will be enough. And remember, I've said that a source tells me there are multiple Zen 2 and RDNA 2 products out there in labs right now, and they're all being considered for all of TSMC's family of seven nanometer nodes. AMD is in such a position now that they can just decide what the best node is for each product based on how big the dies will be and how many they plan to sell. And AMD's nodes they're choosing from are a lot better than the ones Intel is right now. So again, I do think AMD just has an advantage. And in fact, I'll also say this, I've been told that there should be some interesting RDNA 2 workstation chips leaking within about a month from now depending on what goes on with the world i suppose that could be delayed but that will also be detailed in another video where i'll probably go over the full next gen rdna2 stack because it will be a full product stack so please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear or see about that in my videos and podcasts remember to ring the bell button share my content and consider supporting me on patreon the patron supporters are the ones who make this possible and they get a lot of exclusive stuff every week all right thank you for watching